Gets it done every time. Informative fisherman. We're getting informative with you. <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah. Get the boat. Oh, nice, dude. Nice. Out here on Clear Lake with Big Bait's Paul Bailey. Now, I'm sure you guys heard of Paul. Paul's an incredible tournament angler. But, Paul, what's your new business venture that you're going to be doing on this lake? We're going to start taking people out on guide trips out here on Clear Lake. Paul Bailey, guys, you heard it, is going to start guiding out here on Clear Lake. I'll make sure when Paul's ready and, and done, I'll put the information right down here. Check the description of the video. Come book with Paul. He'll put you on fish like this. <laughs> He'll be having you throw baits about this size or bigger and whacking big old giant bass. Dude, that's a killer buzz bait fish. That's a good one right there. Awesome. We, uh, this lake is chocked full of five to seven pounders this time of year, and uh, it's pretty much we go around, we throw the big baits for them, we throw double buzz baits, we throw swim baits, we throw wake baits, you name it, we're going to go try to catch them, but absolutely it, smoked it, man. That's why we're out here, right here. Nice, stay with us guys, we're going to whack a bunch of big ends, we'll go over a little technique for you and talk about Clear Lake with Paul. Stay with us. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, but we'll take them. Oh, I'm putting on a buzz bait now. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Nice. Oh. DM double buzz action. Crushed it though. Crushed it. Came up and sharked it. Had a wake behind it and everything. Nice. We do it clearly. Top wire. Yeah! <laughs> Got it in the grass, and we're gonna get him out right now. Woo! Big slug! Coming in the boat. Darn! <laughs> uh. Buzz bait 101 right there, man. <laughs> That's why we come to Clear Lake. You know, you, so many fish in this class, five to eight pounds that... Crazy. I, you know, I, I know there's other lakes in the country that are close to it, but as many days throughout the year that these fish bite, you know, this has to be one of the best, and that's why it's number two, but... Number two in whose book? Number two in uh, Bassmaster's book. Not your book, book right? Number one <laughs> in everybody else's book the Paul in Paul Bailey book number one. <laughs> oh yeah, man, that's awesome. But it's pretty cool. You can see she got that whole bait. I love that focus on it there. <laughs> Crazy. Big fish though. Awesome, we'll man. Let, we'll let her go back and swim another day. Dang. <sighs> Yeah, it's my turn. It's my turn. Nick's now. turn. Nick's gonna get one. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, girl. She is too friendly. She is too friendly. Hey, she got a sister? <laughs> Hang with us, guys. We'll be right back. Did you know that P-Line makes specialized lines for all your fishing needs? From the super strong, abrasive resistant CXX or the low stretch, super stealthy CX Premium. Or maybe you're looking for invisibility or super bite detection with P-Line's 100% fluorocarbon. No matter what your needs, P-Line's got it covered. To find out more, visit P-Line.com. P-Line, baby! Attention Northern California anglers, have you been to boat country in Escalon? With one of the largest selections of welded aluminum fishing boats from Weldcraft, Low, and Hughescraft, chances are they've got the right fishing boat for you. And did I mention they have a full service center to take care of all your boating, repair, and maintenance needs? If you're a boat owner or just looking to become one, you owe it to yourself to check these guys out. Visit BoatCountryUSA.com or stop on by. I'll see you there. You've been to RustyLures.com? Did you know they offer free shipping on anything over $29.99? And with all the latest and greatest in bass fishing gear from punching tackle, umbrella rigs, swim baits, and you name it, there's really no reason for you not to be getting the best deal online today. So go to www. 
RustyLures.com. Been thinking about trying out kayak fishing or already into it and just want some sick upgrades for your rig? It's time to check out the Headwaters Kayak Shop. Come pick the brains of their knowledgeable staff and make sure to ask about their awesome demo program to find the right kayak for you. Or stop in and rent one with Lodi Lake right down the street. The Headwaters Kayak Shop fits all your yakking needs. Tell them if sent ya. Try pulling a planer board next to your boat when trolling or fishing from a swift current bank? If not, you're missing out on one of the most phenomenal fish catching machines on the market today. With Yellowbird planer boards pulling your lines perpendicular to your boat, you can't help but catch more fish. Find out more by visiting www.yellowbirdproducts.com. Do you ever wish for an RC boat when you were a kid? And do you have a passion for fishing? Well, guess what? It's time to do them both at the same time. With RCFishingWorld.com's RC Fishing Pole, it's time to be a kid again. So visit www.rcfishingworld.com today. Thanks for watching. Now let's get back to the show. Oh, we got two with it too. There we go. I don't call them big baits for nothing. <laughs> Let me, uh... I think, uh, I think Paul's ranging on 20 pounds while I'm at zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't want to fish behind Paul. My you got him coaching you, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Let me get this bait out of here and I'll hold him up for you guys. Get him, get him to a place where I can hold it. But, Beautiful. Big man. old glide bait. Nice chunky bass. That's what we do. That's why we come to Clear Lake. They eat everything you want to throw. That was weird. Put, put down the double buzz bait. Looked at the grass mat and said, I, I know there's fish on it. We got to get one to bite. Threw the glide bait next to it and 10 wines she got it. So sometimes it's all about decisions in this game and just happened to make a right one. Good decision. Good decisions. Watch behind the bait. Pretty much what we got going on is fish have got done spawning about uh shoot I, you know there's still fish on beds right now but the majority of them have got done spawning so what we're doing now is we've come off the spawning flats and we're sitting on the first piece of structure off of the spawning flats which is uh on this lake it's either going to be grass or it's going to be a duck uh, in this case, we're fishing grass. So what we're doing is, all I'm doing is trying to find, I want the, gr the oh. You were saying? <laughs> oh, he just came up and whacked it. I kind of got him in the belly. <laughs> he kind of just came up and whacked it. But as I was saying, we're just trying to, uh, fish the edges of the grass here and this guy came up in the middle of my story and decided to have at me. <laughs> Let's get this hook out of him. Awesome. <laughs> Weird. It didn't feel like a bite. It felt like he came up and whacked it. Sometimes they get it, sometimes they don't, but if you line that up, he was trying to go for it. <laughs> Boat. It's in the boat. In the mouth. That's it. It's in the boat. <laughs> hey, what are you gonna do? Cute little guy. Cute little guy. He's blind. He's blind. That's why he ate me. See? <laughs> but yeah, no. As I was saying, what I'm trying to do here is, is work the outside edge of this grass. You guys can see all the grass right here. I'm sure as we're as we're going over it. It's gonna be in big clumps. You want to fish those clumps that are just under the surface. You don't want to be if you notice over here at other spots, there'll be a lot of the grass that's right on the surface and floating. You want the ones that are just below the surface. Those ones seem to have the most life on them, and that's what we're focusing on now. So stick with us. We're going to keep going. Okay, guys, now for our buzz baits today. We're throwing double bladed buzz baits. This is what? DM? DM Custom Baits Buzz Bait? DM. The double blade has a lot more lift to it and just crazy noise, crazy displacement. This is all about reaction. They're buried down in the weeds. We're coming over the top of their head. It's loud and it's obnoxious and they crush it. Our subtle moving baits today, they just didn't want to go for, but we are getting them reacting. It's slowed down for a little while here. Um, what I'm throwing it on is 50 pound braid. A lot of the time with your 50 pound braid, if it's not tuned just right, or if you don't spool your braid really tight, a lot of the time the line's gonna dig back in on itself because it's a thinner diameter. 
Paul, you throw what, 60, 65? I throw it on 65 pound, yes. So that's 15 pound diameter. So what you're gonna realize is the braid doesn't dig in on itself as much. And also the line, it has more buoyancy. It has more surface area. And with the buzz bait, as soon as you hit the water, you're gonna start bringing it up fast and you want this thing to plane across the surface of the water. So what you wanna do as just before it's gonna hit the water, you wanna close your clutch and you wanna engage your reel and start reeling as it hits the water to where it starts taking off. You don't want it to hit, then engage your reel and then start retrieving because then it's gonna porpoise up when you could have landed and got that smooth go like that. Now, a lot of guys when they first start throwing a buzz bait um, have a lot of trouble, okay? Because it's real easy to backlash because with these big blades on here, you have a lot of resistance with the wind. So one of the downsizes is if, if, you, if you're normally within about that eight to 10 inch mark from casting right there, backlash happens a lot. Uh, one thing you can do if you don't have the perfect buzz bait rod, which I'm doing today, is I'm actually going almost half the length of my rod right here when I'm casting and I'm turning and rotating into my cast so you can hear the blades go and speed up that way. If you go with a snap cast, you're almost gonna backlash every time because you're throwing this big resistance bait and then it's slowing down with the wind and finding its speed. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna overrun the line on your spool and you're gonna get a backlash like that. Um, iRod just came out with the new rod that Andy Morgan designed. What model is that, Paul? It's called the 764. It's called the light flipping jig, or light flipping rod and uh, it ends up being perfect for throwing double buzz baits on it. And the reason for this, show them the action of that rod, bend that over. If you bend this over, I got a lot more tip than we do on a normal Look rod. at that, it starts bending back in here. It's really nice parabolics. So it allows this rod to load up to where it's very difficult to snap cast and over accelerate your spool. It loads up and then it throws it out there for you. So this rod's absolutely killer for the buzz bait presentation. Um, I don't have this rod, Matt Newman. Um, but what I do have is the frog rod right here is what I'm throwing on and if you look at this It's a much tighter tip yep. versus Paul's here. I have a much faster action So my rods a little bit snappier This was designed for setting hooks on frogs and casting with accuracy I'm not so much lobbing a bait, but more pinpoint accuracy So it's very easy for me to backlash with this if I don't have my line out further and do that load into it uh, cast like that. But with this rod, it's way more forgiving because it loads it up and throws it for you. So a lot of the time, this is gonna be your much better rod, this setup right here. That's a medium heavy. It's actually, he calls uh, it a heavy. Oh, it's a heavy, it's oh. It's a heavy, but it's got a different blade. Look at that heavy. nice tip. Yep. Yeah, so check, check that guy out. That's the 764C heavy. This rod's absolutely sick, and I'm gonna go get one as soon as we're done with this shoot today. Turn down for what? What's up guys, this is what we got going on right now. Throwing glide baits. This one's about an eight inch glide bait. He's got himself a, a fish sitting on his line, but he didn't see it. Did you, <laughs> sorry, did you see that, Derek? Huh? You had a bass sitting on was your that, line. Was that what that was, was dude? I your... thought that was blowing grass. No, and you hit him with your line. <laughs> yeah, I felt something rubbing my line. I'm throwing the Savage Gear line through trout. We've actually had a couple of takers just come unpegged. Um, from coming out here so keep going Paul yeah you know all we're trying to do is this was just a real small grassland about a week ago uh, in the last five or six days the wind has really broke it up a bunch and created a big huge hole out here for us so uh, all we're doing now is there's a lot of sparse grass and on this side over here is a real hard edge of grass we're fishing the lane between the sparse grass and the heavy grass and that's a real ticket up here at Clear Lake is you want to get on that main line of grass piles step it out just a little bit and get into that secondary line and that's where most of your bites are going to come from. Uh, fishing about six to eight feet, uh, glide baits, big swim baits, uh, we're at Clear Lake and uh, we're getting action. It's just hard to get them in the boat right now but they're we're trying. They're following it all the way up to the boat. So after Paul cracked those fish this morning, I've been plagued. I've had three fish come off on the frog. Good fish too. Watched them come up, clean water, clearly eat it choked down, couldn't see the frog at all, swung, miss, <laughs> swung, miss. We're like, what the heck, man? So I sissied out and I picked up the worm. Felt a whole lot less manly for picking up the worm on Clear Lake, let me tell you. So instead I said, all right, Paul, let's drop it, man. Now we're going out like this. I'm not going out like that, let me tell you. If, if I'm gonna blank here on Clear Lake, it's gonna be with a big old giant bait in my hand. <laughs> and I just had a big one come up big. So we're gonna keep on trying. Hopefully we can knock one more good one for you guys. So 
Hang in there. Well, it happened. I managed to blank on Clear Lake. I had about eight good fish hooked up that probably would have been well over 25 pounds, uh, but that's just the way it goes some days. Some days you get them, some days you don't. Instead of us calling it a wrap and saying, hey, that's the shoot, and me just showing Paul catching fish, he said, hey, I got a few hours the next morning. Let's get back out, repattern some of those fish that we were already on. So that's exactly what we did. All right, guys, so we made it back out the next morning here. Paul was cool enough to give us a few more hours for the next morning before he had to take off. The difference is yesterday, it looked like we had a lot of bed garters. And, you know, the sun was up, it was the middle of the day, so maybe that's what they became more intrigued on and not really feeding so much. You know, we had a few hookups on the swim bait, but at the time we found our swim bait fish, we only had about 45 minutes left in the day. So this morning, we're right here on it. Uh, we found just a ton of active fish, and we're now we're in that prime hour. We're in, what, 5.30 a.m. right now. So hopefully they'll be much more willing to chew and commit to a big bait, need it first thing this morning. Uh, Paul's throwing a waking swim bait. I'm throwing that line through trout again uh, to see if they'll commit. We also got trash fish tied on. They love to eat that here at Clear Lake. And you know, we got indicators from the buzz bait yesterday too, but all those other baits that didn't do for us are off the deck. We're going with the baits that they knew they were committing to and going back to the spots and try to utilize the best baits in the best spots at these prime hours. Yesterday we were having a lot of problems getting short strikes. Uh, I think they were coming up off of beds and, and just saying, hey, get out of here. They weren't necessarily eating the bait. You know, so, yeah, pretty much. They're saying, get the heck out of here. I own this area. Uh, what I did was I changed it up. I put a nine inch predator swim bait on. Uh, it's got belly treble hook and it's got a trap hook on there also. So if they come up and they start doing that defensive guard, I should be able to get a hook in one and, uh, and we'll be able to see it. So that's how I changed it for today. We'll give it a couple casts and see what happens. Yeah, who makes that bait, Paul? This is, uh, this is called a Predator Swim Bait. My brother, Sean Bailey, uh, owns the company. You can get a hold of him uh, online. You can email him or you can get a hold of him on Facebook. All the information is under Predator Swim Bait Company on Facebook. Awesome. So check him out. So we made a run, our swim bait fish weren't participating for us, so we made a run back over to where uh, Paul found another nice school of fish. And uh, they've been taking the buzz baits over here. They took the buzz baits for us yesterday. So we're gonna fan around the outside of this grass line, work around the bank, work some outer stuff, the offshore stuff, and uh, see if we can produce some on the buzz baits. We got a couple of big followers on the swim baits. Just didn't seem like they were ready yet, so we might run back to those. But for right now, we're gonna see if we can whack them like this. Giant. giant on the buzz bait. Oh my giant. Coming over. That is Here she comes. Go! Oh, Woo! Yeah, buddy. Woo! <laughs> They're like, ain't hey, eluding me anymore. No, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh. Comes off. It came off. Yeah. Nice. Oh, man. God, we worked for that one, didn't Woo. we? Yesterday, dude, I ate good opportunities and just the fish wouldn't stay pegged. I mean, that's how bass fishing goes. We all know. Yeah. You know, if I would have landed them, it probably would have been 25 plus pounds and I've been hooting and hollering. So, yep. it wasn't a performance issue. It's just how it goes. This right here is what it's all about. Out here at Clear Lick with Paul Bailey, guys. Paul's guide information is in the description. Get out here, whack these biggins, man. This is awesome. It's all around this lake. People need to keep control of their dog. Another dog. It's another good one right there. Damn. <laughs> we should see if we can go three for three right here. Right? Now it's back to back cast. That is awesome. Damn. This yeah. place, you just gotta keep moving around here. That's the way Clear Lake fishes, you know. You, some schools are feeding, some schools aren't. You just gotta keep going. Put your head down and keep making casts because you will run into them. There's a lot of fish on yeah, this Yeah, it's really not about being overly patient in this spot. Yeah, a few areas had, you know, it was a timing deal. Right. But it's really about covering a lot of water, running and gunning around here until you find these fish. You find the active feeding fish yeah. and you guys are gonna get bites. So uh, yeah. that's pretty so, much what we're doing. We did a little running around this morning. And... So don't be a patient fisherman. No, yeah. <laughs> run around like a chicken with his head cut off and you're gonna do great, I promise. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, oh God. That's a good one. Good Try it. Holy moly. Oh, 
where'd he go? There he is. Oh, good. Oh, man. Goodness, oh, here that's he comes. Good one. There you go. Both time. Oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> it's happening now, baby. Yeah. Woo. Too freaking cool. It's happening now, baby. Yeah, it is. DM double buzz bait right there. Double blade. Double hammer buzz bait Woo. from DM. Just gets it done every time. I, I think we're I think we're nine for nine on buzz bait bites with that buzz bait. Going we literally, right now. yeah, we haven't missed a single strike. And uh, I'm gonna have Paul actually break down exactly why him and I both think we haven't missed. This is information that people will pay hundreds of dollars for right here. And Paul's gonna share this information with you. Paul here, go ahead and this is what we got Clean going on. Up. Throwing a double buzz bait. It's made by DM Custom Baits. It's called the Double Hammer Buzz Bait. Um, a lot of people just throw it with the skirt. Uh, this is what we got going on. We're throwing a, uh, a horny toad on the back of that. Uh, the reason is, is it gives this bait more float. Not only does it give it float, it displaces the water more when you're winding it in. Uh, if you were to cast this out, wind it straight back to the boat, you're not going to feel much resistance on your reel. If you add this horny toad to it, you're going to feel three times the resistance when slows you're reeling it down. It. Huh? it slows it down, it picks it up in the water, and not only that, it gives it a bigger profile from the bottom side. Focal uh, point, yeah. It, what's that doing? When, when you get a bigger profile on the bottom side, it lets the fish know what it's going to attack. It gives it something to focus on when it's going to strike. It's not just going to strike blades or do the swipe strike. It's going to actually attack and eat. So pretty much the bigger profile gives it more float, displaces more water, and that's why we're using it. And uh, before we put on the horny toads on there, we were missing a lot of bites and we weren't getting that many bites. Put the horny toad on and, and 100 for 100 right now. So It's just ridiculous. And I think the black has a big deal with it. That black is the most standout color always. Black right. or pure white, but the black just seems to be it. I have honestly, I would have told Paul yesterday before coming into this, there is no way we would be 100% on our buzzbait strikes. I always thought buzzbait were like a frog, and you guys know me, I study this stuff through thick and thin. This is the ticket right here. It's absolutely ridiculous. I usually never throw a buzzbait. I'm a walking bait guy. There is no day I am not going out without this tight on now. I live on the Delta, and that is flat out amazing the way bass eat buzzbait, but it used to be a lack of hookup ratio. That is the ticket, you guys. Try it. Call this man up, come book this guy, <laughs> and, and you'll see, you'll know, and that's the type of information you're gonna get being out with Paul. Absolutely, let's go get some more, Let's man. get more, I'm ready. Right here, Eli. Right there. Yeah. Coming in. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. We got buzz, There we go. There we go. We got one on the deck. Yo. There you go. Some more double buzz bait action. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I, you just don't get enough. You can never get enough. Sorry. Yeah. It's so boring the way they just come up and blast a buzz bait off. I, that the thing was hit the bait and back flipped over it. <laughs> That'll put you to sleep. Solid, uh, solid fish, man. They're just uh, yeah. getting healthier and healthier as we catch them. Oh, heck Very yeah. cool. To the next one. That's about 20, 21 pounds right now with four fish. This bass fishing game that we play, you know, everybody loves so much. <laughs> it's pretty much decision making. We were just talking about it right now. Uh, we were talking last night, you know, where should we start? What should we do? We had a lot of swim bait bites yesterday off of a spot. So we said, hey, let's go try to get those swim bait fish. You know, there were a lot of fish there. They seemed to be bigger. Uh, kind of glad we went for that this morning, even though they didn't bite. Uh, what we would have done is we would have started over here where we're catching our buzz bait fish. They probably wouldn't have bit first thing in the morning. We would have left these fish that are now biting to go to the swim bait fish, who who knows what would have happened. Uh, instead, we played it backwards, and, and this is what happened. You turn it into a great day on one decision, and that's all bass fishing is, is just one good decision throughout the day. All right, guys, so that's it. Uh, we had a short day this morning, but luckily Paul was able to come back out, and I was able to break in my uh, my Clear Lake bass. You know, it uh, eluded me yesterday, but that's how it goes. I mean, as long as you know you're performing, you're trying, you're executing with the proper baits and getting big fish to go, if they come off, it's part of bass fishing. You can do everything you can do to execute right, and sometimes it doesn't happen. Even the best guys know. So I couldn't stress over it, and plus I got to watch Paul whack a couple of big ones yesterday. But man, I got mine this morning. Awesome. Yeah, I got me some buzz bait fish. It was absolutely awesome, and hopefully those tips helped out for you guys. 
when the swim bait bite's really going off, we'll get back out here with Paul and have him break down some swim bait stuff for you because when it comes to swim bait fishermen, second to none right here, man. Paul, man, we truly appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you guys watching for the most part and uh, make sure to hit this guy up once again because you're really gonna love it out here. All right, brother, we're out. Thanks for watching, guys. See you guys.